If your business has multiple websites, then this video is for you because I will explain how many GTM containers do you need. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GTM, consider subscribing. Let's say that you're working with a business that owns several websites. One is the main website, then you have, let's say, an online store of that website, and then you have a support website for your clients that might have some questions about your products. So the question here is, should you use one container for all of these websites, or should you create a separate container for each website? And in order to answer this question, you have to ask a question. And that question is, how different is your setup going to be on each website? Are you going to track very similar things on all websites or are your websites going to have different kind of setups, triggers, tags, variables? For example, let's say that on the main website, you're going to track page views, button clicks, form submissions, pricing form calculator, because maybe you have some additional services that people can find the price of by using some calculator on your pricing page. Then maybe your people can engage with your content because maybe you also have a blog on this website. Then when it comes to your e-commerce website, you will probably also track page views and button clicks, but also you're going to track product views, which products are added to cart when a visitor starts a checkout, when a visitor makes a purchase and so on. And then when it comes to the support website, then you will probably again will track some page views, then button clicks, but also you'll probably track things like created tickets. And I'm talking about support tickets. And then maybe people can also provide some feedback whether your article pages are useful or not. So as you can see, even though there are some similarities, for example, page view tracking, most of the setup on each website will be different. For example, maybe you will be using Hotjar, which is a heat map analytics tool. Maybe you will use Hotjar just for the main website and for your e-commerce website, but you won't be using that for your support website. Or maybe you're going to use Google ads tags and you will be firing them only on the main website and the e-commerce website. And again, you won't be firing them on the support side. So as you can see, if your setup will be different on different websites, and maybe you will be even using different tools, then it might make sense for you to have separate containers for different websites. But don't get me wrong, like this is also not perfect. And there is no perfect solution in this case. Having one container has its own pros and its own cons. And also having separate containers has its own advantages and disadvantages. I'm just talking here from my experience and what I think it would be the best option. So if I deal with different websites that will have different setups, then I would go with separate containers. However, sometimes having one container on multiple websites also makes sense. Let's say that you have one website for the English speaking market, then you have the same website, but for the German speaking market, and then you have another one for the Spanish speaking market. The website design is the same buttons, checkout flows, everything is the same. In fact, even the backend of the website is using the same content management system. However, there are just supported different domains and those domains affect the language of the website. Because in this case, I will be tracking the same interactions and the same things on all of these websites. And I will be using the same analytics and marketing tools. That is why if I want to fire a tag, I will not need to, you know, add more complex trigger conditions where I want to fire a tag on this website, but not on this website. But now you might be wondering, how should you configure Google Analytics in single container? Because you want to fire one Google Analytics for property for let's say mywebsite.com, then the other one for mywebsite.de and the other one for the Spanish website. So how should you configure your tracking setup by having just let's say one configuration tag, but it would then pick the correct measurement ID and send the data to particular and proper Google Analytics property. Well, one of the ways how you can achieve that is with a lookup table. Basically, what I could do is that I could create three separate Google Analytics for properties. And I mean, I would do that if I wanted to have those three websites and their data separated. So in that case, I could create three GE for properties. Then in each property, I would create a web stream. And then when I create that, I would get three measurement IDs, one for each website. So what I would do then is that I would go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and then I would create a variable that will return one of three measurement IDs based on the page domain. And that can be done with the lookup table variable. So I will click new in the user defined variable section, then variable configuration, and then I will select 
lookup table. And here I can select the input variable. So this is the variable that Google Tag Manager will check. And based on the output of that variable, this lookup table will return a correct measurement ID. So in the input variable, we could select page host name, because if you remember, we have three different websites and we want to use separate properties for them. And I'm talking about Google Analytics properties. So the first one is www.mywebsite.com. And now I will have to add three rows right here. So if the page host name is www.mywebsite.com, then return measurement ID of the property number one. Then if the page host name is of the website for the German market, then we will use the ID of the second property that we have created. And I will just enter something randomly right now. And then if the host name is of the Spanish website, then this variable should return the value of the third property or actually the third data stream. And then once you create this variable, you could then use it in a Google Analytics for configuration tag. So you could go to tags, open your existing configuration tag, and then in this field, you can insert that lookup table. So when this tag is fired, this variable will check what kind of measurement ID should be used. And it will check that based on the subdomain of the website or actually the host name of the website. And in fact, you can apply this not only for Google Analytics, but for some other tools that you're using as well. For example, if you're using Facebook Pixel and you have different Pixel IDs, then you could use this lookup table method as well. But as I've already said in this video, having multiple containers or having one container is not a perfect solution. There is no perfect solution. So you have to keep in mind the advantages and disadvantages of having multiple containers, or in other words, having one container per different website. So if you have three websites and it means that you have three containers, one for each website, then it means that you will have to configure less complex trigger conditions, because then you will have to just configure when the tag should fire, for example, when that button is clicked, or you know, something else. But then you would not need to worry about the fact that maybe your tag of the main website will fire on the support website. So in that case, you won't need to add more complex trigger conditions that fire only on this domain or fire on this and that domain, but don't fire on that domain. So in other words, your trigger conditions will be quite lean. And as I've already said, if you create a new tag, let's say for one website, the risk of accidentally firing that tag on another website will be much smaller because, well, actually it will be zero because you won't have the same container on multiple websites. However, there is quite a big disadvantage in this case and you have to keep that in mind. So your main disadvantage is that if you have, let's say 50 websites, and they have 50 containers, and you want to add a tag to all of those containers, you will have to do that 50 times. And if you had one Google Tag Manager container for all those 50 websites, it would be enough to add the tag only once. But if you ask my personal opinion, I would rather have separate containers for each website, because for example, imagine this, if you have 50 websites, and you have a bunch of different trigger conditions and tags, and some tags fire on website A, while the other one fires on website B, you will very quickly reach the limit of 200 kilobytes per Google Tag Manager container, because that is a maximum size of the container. So if you have, let's say 10 or 20 websites and each one of them has a separate container, you can obviously do everything manually one by one by copying tags, triggers, variables, maybe exporting some files and importing into a new container. So that is one option. Then I have another option, which is a bit faster. Simo Hava has created a tool that is called gtmtools.com. So here you can browse containers that you have access to. You can select certain items. For example, I would like to copy this tag, this variable, this trigger, and then all of those items are added to a cart. And then when you have collected all your items in the cart, you can click clone to container and then select to which account and which container do you want to clone those items. However, you should also keep in mind that here you're working with one container at a time. So it means that you cannot copy the same item to 50 containers, but this is a bit faster than just manually working with Google Tag Manager's interface. So you clone to one container, then you clone the same thing to another container, to another container, and so on. Or if you're working with a very large setup and you have enough development resources, and you know this will save you a lot of time, and maybe your developers could build some interface where you just select items from one container, and then you can automatically push it to multiple containers at the same time. But this is not something very quick, very simple, and it will require quite a significant amount of time for your developers. I hope that this video helped you decide how many containers do you need. Remember, my thoughts in this video are not some hard rules. If it makes sense for your business to use another approach, then you're free to do so. My tips here are just based on my experience. 
There is no best option here. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.